salty, grainy, and flavorful, a world-renowned delicacy. This is true caviar. Harvested from sturgeon in the Caspian Sea, caviar melts in your mouth like butter with a lingering flavor of ocean water. And at $75 an ounce, it's expensive. However, for us today, we feature the poor man's caviar, pickled mustard seeds. These bloomed mustard seeds have a pop when you bite them and don't cost a king's ransom. It's part of our menu of Parmesan gnocchi with asparagus, hazelnuts, and pickled mustard seeds. I'm living large, and I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Today we feature the poor man's caviar, pickled mustard seeds, as we prepare Parmesan gnocchi with asparagus, hazelnuts, and pickled mustard seeds. Let's get cooking. All right, so we've got our mustard seeds starting to pickle here. And now I let these sit in vinegar overnight, so they started to bloom. Basically what that happens, they go from this dry, hard thing to like a, a, nice, a nice, plump, voluptuous seed, as you can see here. Now be careful, don't get too top over, get over it uh, too much because that vinegar, it'll blast you in the face and you'll be coughing for, coughing for a good couple minutes afterwards. So, once we've got it to this stage, we've reduced some of that vinegar that it's been soaking in, we want to add our other ingredients. We've got some honey here. Grab myself a spoon. Mustard seeds are super sharp, so when you, uh, when you eat them, it's kind of like taking a big mouthful of wasabi or horseradish, right? It would just you know, burn in your nose and be a little sharp. So you want to sweeten it up a little bit. And then turmeric. So we want a little bit of that color. We want to definitely play on the, on the mustard color. So we'll add a bit of turmeric in there. Right, about a, I'd say that's a little, just about a little more than a teaspoon. And I'm going to use my spoon here from the honey and just stir it around. Let all this come together nicely. Let those colors develop. And then you want to let this sit. And what's going to happen is those mustard seeds are going to continue to absorb uh, uh, the flavor of the vinegar and continue to absorb. Eventually, you'll have to add more vinegar. You could keep it in your fridge for probably up to a year, but you got to just add a little more vinegar at a time, okay? So that's pretty much done. We let this sit in the fridge again, like I said, and just let it uh, cool off. Now let's move on to our next stage of making the gnocchi. First thing we want to do is rice some cooked potatoes. So I've got some potatoes that have been cooked and they're just sitting in the water over here. It's really important that you work with warm potatoes. Not hot that you can't handle them, but definitely warm enough that you, uh, that, that you want to, that the skin peels off really nice and easily. You can see it's just kind of peeling away here. They are, uh, they're definitely warm. So just be careful with that. That's my fork here. Whew. That's the, uh, hot, the saying hot potato definitely comes from this. Okay, so peel the, all the skins away. And I'll show you just the quick, quick uh, process of the ricing here. So if you don't have one of these ricers at home, you can use a uh, potato masher, but um, you won't get the same effect. We really want this rice kind of looking stuff to come out. So you can see here, I'm gonna give it a good squeeze. There we go. See how you got sort of individual sections that kind of looks like rice? That's exactly what we're looking for. What that's gonna do when we let it sit in the fridge, which is the next step of this, we want to let this sit in the fridge overnight, uncovered, just as it is here. You would mash the rice, the rest of them, like I've done, I'll show you in a second here. But uh, let it uncovered so that you have a chance to dry out some of that potato, okay? So I'll set this aside and I'll go to the fridge and I'll grab the, uh, the, the ones that we've already riced. All right, you see here? So at home, you can see we did it in just a, in a small bowl. If you have the big luxury of a big, huge fridge, lay it all out on a bake sheet so it really has a chance to dry out a little further. Now, we're gonna take this potato, we're just gonna pour it out on our bench right here. You can see it's kind of dry, they come apart like that. It's not dried out to the point that they're crunchy, but we've definitely let a little bit of that moisture uh, evaporate from them. There we are. Okay, now's the part where we're making our gnocchi. Gnocchi, tiny little Italian dumplings, Pretty much every, uh, pretty much every culture or every country has their own form of dumpling, and gnocchi happens to be Italy's. We want to add some flour. Oh, look at that egg go! It knows what's coming next. Here we go. Some flour. Mix that together a little bit, 
and then we're gonna crack an egg into it. Okay. Now we're making these little pillows here. Uh, some salt and some Parmesan cheese. Parmesan has a nice saltiness. It has this really unique flavor, a little bit of nuttiness. The older the Parmesan, the more depth of flavor you have. Uh, only Parmesan from the Parma region of Italy can be called Parmesan. Uh, this one here, in fact, is about a 24 month old Parmesan. So it has a really unique salt flavor, uh, saltiness to it, and a really unique flavor. So, we're gonna just mix this all together. See the eggs starting to break apart there. And we're really gonna bind all this up. Start pressing it. You're gonna get your hands dirty. <laughs> That's okay. That's what the fun of cooking. Oh. Now you see I didn't add all the flour all at once there. It's because as I go, I wanna measure how much moisture I'm gonna have left. We, it varies every time, so there isn't an exact recipe. You gotta feel it, touch it, get in there with your hands. If they're still kinda of wet and dirty like this, grab a little more flour, dry it out a bit because everybody's potatoes are gonna be slightly different in moisture content. Depends on how long you let them sit in the fridge for, too long, too little, so on and so forth. Okay, but as you go, you're gonna to start to see it come together. It's starting to look great there now. Maybe just a little more rolling here. Be careful not to overwork this, okay? We don't want tough little pillows, we want light, fluffy little clouds, okay? Get a little bit more off my hands here and you can take a little more flour for that. It's a great way to clean up your hands when you're working with dough like this. And then scoop those up. Okay. Oops. Making a mess here. Out of the way, Parsley. <laughs> okay. Here's the fun part now. So I've got a little dough scraper here. I'm just going to cut this into sections because we don't want to work with the whole batter. We, we need a bench twice as long as this in order to, uh, to make our gnocchis. We'll take, take this piece here and we want to start rolling it out. Trying to make like a little log. It'll look like a snake by the time we're done with it here. Press it together. Pressing a little bit firmly and working your way out. So my hands are kind of going like this as I, as I work, okay? Nice. It's okay if it starts to break apart like that. Don't, don't freak out and throw it in the garbage, okay? We're just gonna press it back together. Let all those pieces come together nicely. There we go. Looking great. So you can see we have a log here now, that piece, squish it together nicely, no worries. There we go. And now with our bench scraper again, we're just gonna cut pieces off like this. So that's where you get that dumpling from and when they talk about a gnocchi being a little pillow or a lovely fluffy little cloud, there they are. I would certainly rest my head on one of these pillows of gnocchi, I won't lie to you. There we go. If I could keep them from going in my mouth long enough, that's for sure. All right, we'll be back later in the show to pull together our Parmesan gnocchi with asparagus, hazelnuts, and pickled mustard seeds. Don't go away. Right after the break, we're going out on the road. You won't want to miss that. I'm gonna roll out the rest of these gnocchis. Garrett on the go, out in this amazing setting. Out here, beach to one side, what could be better than food trucks on the other? I'm here with Greek on the street, Costa. Nice How are you doing, sir? Good, good, how are you? Man? Thanks for yeah. inviting me in here today. No problem, nice uh, to have you here. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely my pleasure, <laughs> trust me, trust me. This is the easy part of my job. Uh, so you, you got into a food truck. How did that all start? How did that all come about? Actually, once upon a time, I was a driver. Oh, really? <laughs> driver when I come back from, come from Greece. But uh, I wasn't here and I opened a, uh, I worked for High Steakhouse, first of all. Okay, yeah. And after that, we opened a Perkins restaurant, a Greek restaurant. Oh, yeah, bar yeah. Of Gay Street. Yeah. And uh, we worked there for uh, 30 years. Yeah, and work it to the bone, right? That's uh, right. <laughs> and uh, 2009, we decided we sell the place. Yeah. We sell everything, the building in the place. And after that, I'm supposed to retire, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but here you are. Last year, we started this one again with Michael. and. Uh, 
Yeah, nice. We're going that often. Uh, and enjoying it? Feel good being back no, in the this, kitchen? This is, this is, this is different though. It's not like you are in the, in the building every day, you know. You, here you come outside here at the beach, you go, you go in the, in the field, the baseball field. We are there, yeah, right? play baseball, we go to the line, we go here. It's a, it's a different, different nice. work all together. Yeah, yeah, you get a slightly better view uh, That's right. some days <laughs> yeah. of the week, eh? That's right, yeah. So what were you thinking about making for me today? Uh, we're gonna make a uh, super gyro, you know? Uh, we're gonna cook some gyro and uh, pork souvlaki together. Okay. Uh, and uh, we'll put, put them in the pita bread with uh, tzatziki sauce and uh, onions and tomato. We're gonna rub it up. Oh. And, uh, Sounds delicious. Yeah, Greek food's a weakness of mine. I love Greek food. Uh, <laughs> I don't, there's not many foods I don't like, my dear. But <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people like it, and uh, they come back for it and uh, support it. So it's, it's good. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, do we want to hop into the truck and sure. see how it goes? No problem. Perfect. Thanks. Let's head. Ah, so this doesn't take long at all. Just a, just a couple of flips, right? And uh, make sure that make sure you want to flip. But this is this is perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Looks good. And yeah. we have a pita already yeah, warmed up the nicely. There. Yeah. Perfect, so what's the next step? Next step is remove everything from here. Oh, look at this, I got a pair of tongs, can I help? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll take the gyro meat. And we take the rice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we take the pita bread. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. 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 And we'll put tomatoes, some people like tomatoes, some people that don't like tomatoes. Some nice fresh like tomatoes, yeah, yeah, that's good. And a little bit of onions. Red onion. It wouldn't be a Greek food without onions and tomato, would it? <laughs> <laughs> no. And now we'll put this one on the top here. Oh, that's a nice portion too, hey? Yeah, that's, that's Very good. a little bit big, yeah. Oh, it's okay. And, and the souvlaki skewer. Yeah. And so, uh, did you serve this at uh, Pericles when you were I used to have Peri holding that? I used to have a Pericles too, but, uh, but we didn't sell very much of this one. No, and uh, what was the most popular dish then? At Pericles, we yeah. used to sell lots of moussaka, lots of lamb. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, lamb, yeah. roast lamb, we used to have. Yeah. And, How about calamari? Do you make a meat calamari? calamari? We used to make calamari. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Very nice, that okay. looks amazing. And is, uh, any secrets to your uh, tzatziki sauce? Or? Tzatziki sauce I make it myself. Actually, yeah. I make this one this morning. Okay. Yeah. And so Greek style yogurt and? The Greek style yogurt uh, and uh, we'll some delicious. garlic. We we'll put uh, cucumber, garlic, vinegar, mm. salt, pepper. Oh, well, it's very nice. It has a really nice tang to it. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. lovely. Do you mind if I uh, dig sure, in for a bite here? Yeah, go ahead. It looks like it's going to be messy. It looks delicious, it really though. It is messy. <laughs> <laughs> but it tastes good, though. Mm. Oh, my God. But you're going to need another napkin. Costa, that's delicious. That tzatziki. I mean, a gyros without tzatziki would be, it wouldn't be a gyros, just would it? A, that's right. It's a tzatziki. Costa? Yes. Gracias. What do we? How do we say it in Greece? Uh, what would we say? Thank you in Greek. Efkaristo. 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 Uh, very nice. Efkaristo for having me on your truck today. Thank you. And then Opa, we said, are we supposed to say Opa now? You can say Opa, yeah. <laughs> As we have another bite. Opa. Opa. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. It's back to our main recipe now. Parmesan gnocchi with asparagus, hazelnuts, and pickled mustard seed. All right, let's have a look at what we have going on here. So, our poor man's caviar is all set. Last thing we need to do, just add a little bit of chopped parsley to it. There we go. And we'll get this into the pan, and then into a mason jar. All right, just adds a little bit of brightness and a little fresh flavor to those mustard seeds. Give it a little stir. Looks great. Yeah, and then any kind of sanitized jar. This one here works really nicely. Mason jar, because you can put a lid on it. There we go. Now remember, if this absorbs all the moisture in there and it just looks like a big mass of seeds, add some more vinegar, okay? There we are. Tuck that away down here. 
All right, let's pop this into the fridge and we'll grab the one that's already done. There you are. You can kind of see that it's uh, it bloomed a little bit, which looks great. They've absorbed a bunch more of that moisture. It looks fantastic. Let's give them a little taste here. Mmm. Right? Just poor man's caviar. It pops in your mouth just like the real stuff. Love it. Awesome. Okay. We've got some water here that's starting to come to a simmer. We want to add our gnocchi, our little pillows here. We want to add that right to the liquid. And we want to monitor it here. We don't want it rapidly boiling. If it starts to boil rapidly, we're in the weeds. Things are going to be falling apart in there. Okay, so we just put them in before we get to that rapid boil, just like that. When they come up to the surface, essentially they're entirely cooked. So once they pop up, give them another 20 seconds and then pop them out onto this, uh, onto this uh, linen towel here just to dry a little bit, okay? We need a sauce. Just do a quick slice on some shallots. Shallots, onion family, kind of, uh, kind of a cross between an onion and garlic. It's got a really nice flavor used in, in French cuisine a lot. Into our pan, a little olive oil goes. And then crumble those in there. Check on our gnocchis here. See that one starting to come up? Not quite, sunk back down, but we're getting close, so that's great. I'll turn up the heat a little bit on our frying pan. Asparagus. Asparagus, when it's fresh and in season, is one of the, my favorite vegetables of all time. It's got a lovely flavor. It's uh, super unique takes about three years from when you plant an asparagus plant or an asparagus bulb, it's like this big root underground, three years before you receive any, uh, any of the vegetable from it, before it'll actually come to fruition. So it's a, it's a long laborsome process, but boy is it worth it at the end. There we go. And in the right growing conditions, these guys can grow up to an inch an hour. Can you believe that? The stuff you learn on cooking on the coast, hey? Just incredible. Over here you see our Gnocchis are starting to come up there. So once they've come to the top, turn our pan down a little bit too much. Once they've come to the top, 20 seconds, and then onto our plate over there. I'm gonna season that. I've got some roasted hazelnuts here, just local hazelnuts. I wanna just pop a few out onto my tray and give them a crush with the back of my knife. There we go. Want some nice crunch. This is gonna add a lovely crunch to our dish. And also that Amazing sweetness that hazelnuts bring into the pan. Lovely. See the gnocchis, how they've all come up? Can you see that there? Looks great. So we want to pop these out, drain off some of that water, and just onto our cloth there. Pillowy goodness. Can't wait to dig into these. Get the rest of them out. Meanwhile, in our pan, our asparagus is sauteing, our shallots, I can really start to smell the hazelnuts toasting nicely there. Has an amazing aroma. Lovely colors, how bright green that asparagus is. We'd keep going with the gnocchi, but for the interest of today's show, let's move on to the next step of our dish. Lemon, I'm gonna cut this lemon in half here and give it a good squeeze. We're building our sauce right here in the pan, just like this. There we go, we've got olive oil, lemon juice now. Very nice. Okay, and the next piece is obviously our gnocchis. So they've had a chance to sort of sit on the tray there and dry a little bit. So we're just gonna take those, and drop them right into the pan with all that asparagus, shallot, hazelnuts. There we are. Fantastic cheese. Let me get this pan out of the way here so I can. Melding all those flavors together. Looks great, doesn't it? Look at all that color. Incredible. Let's give it a little taste. Taste one of those asparagus. Now you notice I haven't cooked them for very long. Mmm. Mmm. Oh man. So good. The flavor combinations here are incredible. Asparagus, hazelnuts, lemon, all go super well together. And then of course we've got that lovely Parmesan inside the gnocchi. Touch more salt, and we'll get this onto our plate. I'll use the slotted spoon to plate it up here again. There we are. Look at that. Little Italian dumplings, pronounced gnocchi. If you're ever in the restaurant ordering them, it's a funny one. People always have a hard time saying it. And of course, our poor man's caviar. Let's not forget that. 
So we've got lovely pickled mustard seeds that are add, gonna add a really interesting kick of flavor to this dish. Let's not be too shy with them. And we have a little bit of that Parmesan left over, touch around the side. And there you have it, Parmesan gnocchi with asparagus, hazelnuts, and pickled mustard seeds. Can't wait to try this dish. If Pope John Paul XXII can create a position at the Vatican of Master Moutardier, then today, I'm bringing along a master brewer from Category 12 Brewing. Michael, how you doing? Great, Gary. Nice Thanks. to see you, bud. Thanks nice for being here today. Too. So what have you brought in? Um, well, actually, why don't you start by telling me a little bit about Category 12? Yeah, we get asked that question a lot. I bet. Um, wanted to play off my scientific background. So my previous career was scientific research, mm -hmm. and we wanted to sort of infuse some sci-fi into the name. We were kicking around stuff like Area 51, and Category 12 kind of um, was up on the whiteboard. And what we liked about it when abbreviated, C12 yeah. reminded me of Carbon 12, ah, which was kind of central to my research. So, ties it all back full yeah, circle. And there you got the atomic logo. And, ah, yeah. It's very cool. I mean, it's definitely catchy and people who know it, that's for sure. And so what have you brought today? I brought something from the hoppy side of the house. All right. This is our wild IPA. Very nice. And um, it's really cool because we're using a pretty undomesticated yeast strain that's really fruit forward. So we get some really nice tropical and mango fruit coming off the yeast and it's, it's not a bitter IPA. It's actually quite fruity. And that's all from the yeast that you propagate, is that from what I understand? Exactly, so you yeah. you create these yeast strain, or they, you get a yeast strain and then you grow it, right? I grow it up. Allows me to work with a lot of different ones all at the same time. Very neat. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that really has a nice fruity nose. Mmm. Oh, I think that's gonna work really well with this. So we've got these, the poor man's caviar in the in the uh, mustard seed here. Awesome. Um, and so it adds a bit of that acidity, but there's also lemon on, on the base of this, right? And as we know, lemon and Parmesan goes really well together. Cool. So I think your IPA is gonna do really well with that. Mm. Nice little pillows there, hey? Mm. Oh, that's really nice and light. Mm. What do you mm. think? Absolutely. It works so well with the mustard. Like I find the pickled mustard seed in that really is accentuated by the by the beer. So it must be the fruitiness in there with that wild with the wild yeast. Yeah, definitely. A little hint of tartness in there too, mm -hmm. coming through with the mustard and that's that's excellent. Yeah, we're definitely not gonna let this go to waste, are we? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Awesome. <laughs> Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Chack. Thanks for watching and don't forget to savor the flavor. Mm, dig in. Awesome. Yeah, great job. Thank you. That's very good. Oh, that's nice.